I look at the Philippines in the next three years, we have always been trying to set our eyes on 2022, or in this case, 2021. We're still the country with the fastest growth rate. Historically, what we have seen is that the Philippine economy, despite the many challenges, and I think the business community has partnered together with public sector to really make sure that the growth continues. The banking industry is still going to continue to grow as they try to reach more of their constituents, uh, even outside of Metro Manila. So we're seeing a lot of uh, digital companies on fintech, for example, who are targeting the Philippines because there's still a lot of things that we can do to make the, the people in the rural areas benefit from fintech technologies. The immediate growth we're seeing from the BPO sector is not in Manila. We're seeing them grow into tier two and tier three cities, which is very crucial as we try to move a lot of the expansion to the region. I'm seeing a very bright future for 2019 and up to, I think, more than five years from now. The large enterprises in the Philippines have varying degrees of their levels of uh, security maturity. Some of them have implemented very sophisticated technologies already, and some are still just starting. Will they build their own data centers, for example? Will they build their own pool of expertise? Do they have the access to global intelligence reports? So that's the holistic approach that we want to try to espouse to our customers. The SMEs are smaller, uh, and there are sometimes a false sense of security that we're small and we will not be attacked by cyber criminals. In fact, there was a study by Wall Street Journal that, uh, especially for small businesses, once they are attacked, almost 80% of the small companies who are attacked never get to recover. And that is the reason why cybersecurity needs to be at the core of their business as well. Cybersecurity for government, we feel is no different than cybersecurity for enterprises. A lot of their customers and constituents are now accessing data from the internet. So if you take a look at it from a cybersecurity professional's perspective, there's a bigger area to target. We pursue innovation. We have learned we cannot do it alone. And the key to success for us has always been partnerships. You can partner with a provider such as PLDT or in this case EPLDT. You can just have a subscription model that allows SMEs to actually have access without having to build it on their own. A lot of U.S. companies, for example, learn from customer servicing from the Philippines. And I think that is one of the key uh, traits that the Filipino worker has. It's really the empathy towards the customer. That is the reason also why we are the number one contact center hub of the world. Data is now the new currency of any business. We are trying to make decisions faster by making more data-driven decisions. And that has been talked about in the past. That's going to be the success factor of any new digital business moving forward. Traditional businesses are getting disrupted, and the newer guys that are coming in are all data-driven. Those data-driven decisions and changing the business models are the ones that are going to disrupt current business models. And you put the Philippines into the map for Asia. It has always been our aspiration or a question whether the Philippines could be a data center hub of Asia. Uh, historically, that has always been Singapore and Hong Kong. That is where all the big data centers are. But if you take a look at the recent history that we have had, over the past five years, we have grown the number of data centers in the Philippines, in the PLDT group alone, from one to 10 data centers already. And even all the regional guys, even the international global digital companies are here. And why would you say that? First, we are 105 million Filipinos today and we are still the biggest in terms of social media. Everybody's connected. That's why all of these global companies are actually looking at the Philippines as the great destination because everybody is definitely connected. And the number of eyeballs that could be tapped as a potential is large. The uh, challenges that, are, that I'm seeing for digital transformation to happen here in the country, first and foremost, is companies accepting that it is time to disrupt themselves. The traditional companies that we're seeing are now moving into digital transformation more actively uh, compared to previous years. And there's a very good sign. The SME segment still comprise 99% of the Philippine economy in terms of number of enterprises. And if we're able to grow that, then the multitude of growth for the country in terms of its GDP is going to be tremendous. The role of ICT in that growth for SME is very, very critical. Uh, we've seen over the years that the most successful companies have made ICT or digital as part of their ecosystem. The younger entrepreneurs today are more technologically adept, we think. They are more open to adapting technology and we're seeing a lot of different business models moving forward. Young budding entrepreneurs 
who are now starting their businesses on their own, and that's going to be good for the Philippines. But the global Filipino talent is worth looking into more than just uh, a cost arbitrage. The companies have realized that the Filipinos, or the Philippines itself, is not just about labor arbitrage. It's not about cost anymore. The quality of the Filipino workforce is something that we can be proud of.